Hi everyone, this is marie and I wanted to share with you a few tips on how to create highlight mats or tone mats. Since it's a manual process, any little tricks to go faster is very useful. So I will show you how this mat layer was created. The first thing is instead of creating a regular layer, what I did is I, I right click on my bat layer in my timeline view and I go to add sync drawing layers. So the sync drawing layers are very useful in cutout animation, but they are also very useful when it comes time to create mats for frame by frame animation. I will name this one mat. Add and close. And you can see that when I add it, there's now that little link icon that appears when I select either of these layer. And the other thing you can see is that this new layer, the matte layer, has empty frames that have been created matching the existing drawing here. So as I go, you can see that the exposure of these two layers match. There's no drawing in my matte layer. There's only exposure matching the bat layer. And the nice thing is if I decide to add a new layer in one of the two layers, it appears in the other one as well. So if at a later point I decided to add more drawings to my animation, an empty drawing exposure would also be created in my mat layer. If I decide to change the exposure by increasing it, you can see that it changes in both layers at the same time. And that's the difference here is that it's not a clone layers where it's sharing the same drawings and exposure. It's only sharing the exposures, not the drawings. So that gives me the freedom of creating tones and highlight masks in that new layer. So now to draw the different drawings, I'm going to go on my first frame and I will use a couple useful features uh, available on the stroke tool or the polyline tool. So I'll use the polyline tool and in my color view, I'll choose, it can be whichever color you want for the mask. The color really doesn't matter, but I tend to use green, like a green screen or blue screen, or just, this is fairly standard colors for mask. But again, as long as the opacity is 100%, the color you use doesn't matter. And then in the two properties view, I will use the, I will enable the option auto fill and auto trim. So what does this do is that first of all, the auto fill as I draw a shape, when I close it by clicking on that little red square, fills the shape automatically. But the other part that is very useful is this auto trim. So again, as I go like this, I can click on this little square and it will auto fill and trim anything that sticks out. Now, depending what you have to draw, you may also want to enable the align handle option. But sometimes for me, I realized that it was a, I was having a very precise shape to match my drawing. And when I was closing it, it was rounding it too much, overlapping in areas where there should not be any highlights. So when I draw highlight mask matching an animation, I don't tend to enable this option. But again, that's up to you. So as I start drawing the highlights for my character, make sure I'm in my matte layer and then I will start drawing my shapes. I make sure to start way outside of it and useful shortcut to remember if you hold down the option or alt key, you can break the handle and continue modifying your shape without touching the lines you drew previously. Can do the same here, break my handle go across and then if I close the shape, it auto fills and it also trims any extra lines sticking out of it. Sometimes you may not see very well what you've done. So you may want to temporarily change your mask color to add a bit of transparency to it so that you can see through it. And then afterwards, I'll put it back to 100% to make sure that my highlight color or my highlight mask is fully opaque. And so that's pretty good, but you could decide to change the size of your pencil line to make sure that it's smaller. So I'll change it to actually one. Uh, I'll type it in directly here. So one, it makes it a lot more precise when I draw my lines. 
and I can do the same on the back going back to my polyline and here too I'll change it to one and I can start drawing my zone again here I'm gonna stick out of the character's body make that a shape and here this is why when I have precise square shapes like this I'll do this I don't like to use the handle uh, the balancing the handles because then it would round off the shape which would not work here I want to keep it very precise to where I drew it so then I'm going to close that and it's going to paint it over and over and then I can do it on the wings and so on and just a little trick so often I tend to copy this zone and press G to go to my next drawing and paste it here, position it here and align it properly. I can take this shape, skew it a little bit and then I will play with F and G a lot to make sure that my mask follows well the animation and it's not jumping around because there's nothing worse than having that boiling effect of because we didn't check the drawings previous and next the drawing the animation highlights are not well aligned so it's always good to double check what you're doing here and then you can go frame by frame and add your different uh, highlight zone that you need for your mask and so that's why I find it so handy to use these different uh, options on the polyline and also using the sync drawings when creating uh, frame by frame highlights or tone masks